welcome back. Uh, always a delight and an honor when he gives us time to have Rick Green with us. He's the founder of the Patriot Academy, and he's a former uh, Texas state representative. You can go to patriotacademy.com. And he's another big threat to democracy. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he's a major threat to democracy. <laughs> One of my favorite deplorables. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm a threat to, to democracy. The founders called it mobocracy and one of the greatest of evils. So we're a republic for a reason. But I didn't know it was tie day, man. Look at you in the tie and everything. Here I am still casual, but that's okay. I love you, brothers. Good to see you, man. That's okay. I, I have a fast event I got to do right after gotcha. I talk to you. Uh, good to see you. Uh, well, listen, we hear the word democracy. I guess we're now a threat to uh, democracy. Yeah. And I got to thinking about that. In fact, Megan was just telling us, too. Uh, you know what? We are. <laughs> we should be. <laughs> right. You know, um, so. Yeah, these people, they want they want more. The closer we can get to democracy for them, the better, because that's mob rule. And that's essentially what they're they're after is the chaos of cultural Marxism and mob rules necessary to to bring that about. So, you know, that's why they constantly talk about a threat to democracy. And and uh, what a shame, though, man. What a shame. I've I've, I've never in all of my reading and watching and everything else in, in, uh, of historical speeches, uh, nothing like it. No, no president's ever done this. Even Lincoln didn't do this to, uh, when we were in civil war. Uh, so it's it's shameful, and uh, but it's par for the course, man. They've been building up to this uh, for a long time. I'm just surprised they would make it as uh, as broad as as they have been uh, to make guys like you and me uh, the enemy now. Well, they seem to be drilling down on it too, which is interesting. Uh, that it. You know, well, they tried to back it up and then they go out and they give a speech, a speech and they drill down on it a little bit more. Is it? Do you think it's working, uh, Rick? No, I think it's definitely going to backfire on them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that that Perry guys like you and me would would talk about some of these things and and we would see these dangers to the country and sense some of the things that were happening years ago and and just say, hey, I don't know if that's that's good for America. I, I don't know if that's uh, if that's good for a culture. And, you know, their, their eyes would kind of glaze over. They'd be, ah, you guys are paranoid or you're conspiracy theorists or whatever. Now, <laughs> now they're going, wow, uh, we get it now. We get it. We really are in a precarious moment for the nation where we have people that really do want to move uh, to actual socialism and, and I think actual communism. I mean, these are these are Marxists. They're, they're doing it very different. This isn't, this isn't at the point of a gun. It's cultural Marxism. Uh, but I was just, Perry, I was at a, at a state board of education meeting last week testifying against some of these uh, radical leftist agendas in our social studies textbooks uh, in Texas. And uh, I was amazed, man, right here in Texas, just how deep it's gone, how entrenched they are, and how the people that <clears throat> that even our state looks to as experts are these uh, very anti-American, um, you know, all about diversity, inclusion, equity, which is just the, the words that they use for their cultural Marxism. They are deeply rooted into the education system now, and this is not going to change overnight. What we see Biden saying is a part of what they've been feeding to children for decades. So that's why there are some that respond to this well, and, and they're, they, they're with him on this. My hope is that, is that there's enough people still in America that still have basic good old American values, that understand we shouldn't be divided, we should be united, um, and, they, and they love capitalism, they love freedom, they love the Constitution, they love the Bible— maybe the ones Obama talked about, they cling to their guns and their religion, uh, that there's enough of them that, boy, this is a wake-up call, and they will now get involved where they've sat on the sidelines for, for too long, frankly. Did you ever think you'd live to see the day where you're demonized for being a patriot? Not to this level. You know, when I started Patriot Academy 20 years ago, David Barton and I had a conversation about this, and he said, man, I don't know, they've, you know, they've really tried to co-op that term and, and make it sound like if you're a you know, if you're a patriot, then you're part of some crazy militia out in the woods, you know, and all this crazy stuff. And I said, man, I'm not giving up on the term. We're taking it back. And so we kept it and, and, and named it Patriot Academy. But I never thought it would get to this point where they're not just in rhetoric. They're they're literally two tier justice system. If you're a patriot, if you love the country, if you're a MAGA, you want to make America great again. You have a particular justice system that is used against you where you don't get due process where you're put in jail for more than a year and a half, uh, no visitors, the horrible things they did in the gulag in D.C. to these people. But if you're on the other side, you can burn buildings, you can riot, you can do all of these things for months. And if you're arrested, very few of them were arrested, if you're arrested, you're let out the next morning. Not a single one of the BLM or Antifa riders was denied bail. And yet all of these January 6th people denied bail, hundreds of them, 
Uh, it's a two-tier justice system. So it's more than just the rhetoric against a patriot. It's the actual use of government and the force of government uh, to treat people horribly. Like, like I mean, I'm talking, you know, tin pot dictator, third world country kind of stuff here. I did not think I would see that in my lifetime. So, Rick, how would you, through your experience and your passion, how would you describe the word patriot? Well, I go back to the Webster's Dictionary of 1828. It's uh, someone that loves their country and and uh, wants to defend the values of their country, and and that's really what what we're all about. And the people that are uh, are labeled, you know, make America great again, Republicans, uh, they're really just patriots saying, you know, we want our nation to be great. There's, n there's not only nothing wrong with that. If you don't want your nation to be great, there's something wrong with that. Um, so they're people that 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 love. Not to the point of, and this isn't like this is how they try to label us, right? That we're we're so nationalist um, that we we act like our nation never did anything wrong. I know no one, not a single person in in the you know conservative movement, the Make America Great Again movement, the Patriot movement, not a single person that thinks America's perfect, that we didn't have national sins, that that tries to cover up slavery or any of those things. Everyone I know says, yeah, we, we did some bad things just like the rest of the world. But unlike the rest of the world, we had a value system. We had a, a system of, of ideas and philosophies all based on biblical foundations that allowed us to get rid of those sins faster than other nations and heal those sins better than other nations and produce the greatest, most powerful, most free, most benevolent nation in the world that millions are tr still try coming to illegally uh, and that we have the most immigrants in fact, we have five times the immigrants of anybody else. Uh, in fact, we have more immigrants in America than the second, third, fourth, and fifth nations combined. I mean, why would people be trying to come here if we were so evil and wrong? And so a patriot looks at that and goes, wow, we've got something worth defending. We've got a value system that the rest of the world wants. I think we shouldn't be trying to overturn all of this. And the whole idea of cultural Marxism is to tear down all the institutions and start over, to act like everything about the nation is horrible and so bad institutionally so bad that's why they use you know institutional racism and all these terms it's so bad that there's no fixing it you have to destroy it that's what they're after and a patriot saying no wait a minute the the old jewish saying about you know before you tear down that fence find out why our forefathers and ancestors put it there um and so we're all about defending the the, the values of the country obviously improving just like the preamble of the constitution says a more perfect union we always want to be getting better but these people want to absolutely destroy it and start over with a socialist country. Both sides, uh, Rick, argue that they are there to defend the Constitution. Um, I find it interesting that the left strategy is to blame you for what they're doing. <laughs> but here, here's the deal. Uh, both sides yeah. are trying to argue that they are the protectors of the Constitution. Do you think the average American understands what they're trying to communicate there? No, unfortunately, I think, Perry, our, our you know, our, our the way we get news now and our information, our echo chambers, we tend to only hear one side. There's very few people in America that that hear both sides. And, and uh, you know, major media doesn't do that anymore. It's it's pretty much a leftist media that echoes and, and um, you know, colludes with the, the uh, government to have one particular message that everybody gets. So I don't think so. I think they hear the terminology. And when you listen to the terminology the president and and his press secretary use, um, if you know what those words mean, you realize that it's it's just all pack, uh, packs of lies. I mean, that they're literally saying that one group of people is doing exactly what they're doing. In other words, take, for instance, when the president called us fascist. Well, the definition of a fascist is whenever you have a, a dictator without an elective body making rules for everyone. It's not coming through the representatives of the people. One person is making the decisions for everybody and then silencing the opposition oppressing the opposition to not be able to speak or be a part of the debate. Well, does that sound familiar? That's exactly what they've been doing for the last year and a half. And yet they project that term onto the people that are actually saying, no, we're for representative government. We want, if you're going to do any kind of a mandate, you've got to go through the legislature and get that passed. And by the way, there's a constitution that prevents even the legislature from violating individual rights. Um, so it is interesting to watch the terminology, but that's what they're really good at. They're really good at changing the meanings of words. And, and I'll tell you, Perry, there was a gal that testified at this state board of education meeting last week that actually uh, she said it, said the quiet part out loud. She actually said that she thinks the people that have been oppressed 
deserve to define the words the way they want and how they feel because they're the ones that have been through those things. And when she said that, I thought, that's exactly what they believe. They really do think you can redefine democracy, redefine republic, redefine fascism, all of these things to just fit whatever their narrative is, and they're hoping nobody pays attention. My prayer is that we haven't been dumbed down in America enough through our education system so much that we don't recognize this hypocrisy okay. and we don't recognize this for what it is. A quick question before I take a break, and it kind of goes yeah. down what you just said there. Um, the question would be, uh, so far they've gotten away with redefining words, but now there is an awakening. Is yeah. it enough to make the change? It has to be an awakening that is followed by getting out of bed and doing something about it. In other words, it's not enough to wake up. We, you know, the hard part every morning for me because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I dream big dreams, man. I got all kinds of ideas, but it's actually taking those feet, putting them on the floor, getting up and going and doing the hard work. And that's got to be the next step. I think people are awake at this point, but they got to get out of bed, get off the sidelines, get in the game, which means being good citizens, being biblical citizens and participating in this process. Oh, wonderful. All right. PatriotAcademy.com is Rick's website. By the way, he has agents in every state. In fact, uh, Rick, your uh, your presentation, your video series has been aired right here in our own backyard and people really love, love it. it. So thank you. PatriotAcademy.com. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and uh, always a delight to have one of my favorite deplorables. And uh, Rick Green's back with us. He's the founder uh, of the Patriot Academy, former uh, Texas State Representative, and he heads up the Patriot Academy. You can go to patriotacademy.com. You can take his courses online. You can get the video series and share it with your Sunday school class, your home group, whatever you want to do. Uh, it is excellent. Rick, a um, couple questions before I ask the big one. Uh, do you think there is going to be a red wave? I do. Yeah, I, I think even uh, what they're projecting may be uh, uh, may be underestimating uh, the pent up frustration out there and uh, the number of people that are going to show up. Um, people can't take that for granted. You know, some people will say, oh, they're going to win. I'm not going to take the time to go vote. No, this is this is where you have to show up. Uh, it has to be such a big victory that it cannot be manipulated, uh, that, that no matter what, you know, shenanigans they might pull. Uh, that they can't prevent it uh, from happening. And, you know, if you if you think about the rhetoric and the things that they've been saying and the, and the danger that they're trying to create in people's minds that, that the other side, right? It used to be just, well, we disagree on that policy. If they win, they win. If we win, we win. And that's the direction the country will go. Now it's like the whole country is done if they win. And so we have to do everything to prevent them from winning. And that's why I think people were willing to do things that were unethical and wrong because they really thought Donald Trump was Hitler. I mean, there were people that really believed that. This guy is so horribly bad, he's gonna, I mean, they really believe that. And so that's why their rhetoric is so strong and so crazy. But I, everything I'm seeing, I mean, I'm even looking at um, Trafalgar's polls, and they're the most accurate, Robert Haley. He's showing even Washington State, uh, you know, right next to you guys up there, that even that Senate race up there is uh, within three points, I think it is. Um, I would not have expected that, uh, even though I think the, the, the Republican candidate's fantastic. Um, and then, you know, Georgia, he's showing Brian Kemp four or five points ahead of Stacey Abrams. And um, just a, just an interesting, uh, it, it could be across the nation. And the most important thing, of course, is that the House and the Senate both um, switch hands. And that way you can you can at least stop the agenda from moving forward any further. Doesn't mean we're going to be able to reverse a lot of this stuff. I mean, these 87,000 new IRS agents and whatnot, uh, there won't be enough of a majority to to be veto proof uh, from the from, uh, you know, the White House. Uh, which, by the way, I got to say, Perry, that that is um, that is the tenth reason why the founders declared independence. It's number ten out of twenty-seven. They said he has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. Well, that's exactly what our current government is is doing to us uh, with uh, with with these new things that they're trying to do. So, oh, by the way, the classes. They are not boring. I know some people are watching and going, <laughs> history, government, constitution, I'll be sleeping, man. Not in ours. Ours are the only classes on the Constitution in America where you will stay awake and enjoy yourself. Yep, and you'll share it with your friends, and you'll watch it twice. Um, why don't you think, Rick, with all due respect, that the current Republican leadership hasn't taken advantage of the situation? 
Oh, it's man, it's <laughs> it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, they should be waking up every morning going, do I hit them in the mouth or in the gut? Meaning they're giving us so many opportunities to push back and say, look, here's where you're wrong. Look at the danger of, of what you're doing. Uh, and, and there's just a lack of a cohesive message. Uh, I think the people that are making the decisions on the messaging um, are not zeroing in on the things that Americans really care about and, and that, frankly, are what make our nation at the precipice and at, at, at a um, very you know uh, fragile time. So it's bad messaging. The left, unfortunately, has always been better at marketing and slogans and all of those things. And uh, we've got to get better. I mean, it's part of what we train at Patriot Academy, even though, you know, we're training candidates and young people that may not be running for a few more years, is how do you communicate well? How do you how do you speak to people in their language in a way they can understand uh, that will move them to action? And unfortunately, most of the Republican leadership is not very good about that. There are some. I think this Carrie Lake out of Arizona, man, I'm telling you, she breaks through the press no matter what they try to pigeonhole her into. She's like a Ronald Reagan, man. She just speaks over them, sometimes right at them. She and DeSantis, I think, are the model for what it's going to take to be able to win the rhetoric war out there for the hearts and minds of Americans. There's not I, I, I don't really know of anybody in D.C., honestly, that's really good at, at that other than maybe Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert's one of our graduates, actually, and uh, she knows how to hit the nail on the head and communicate in language a country boy like me can understand to some philosophical Harvard person. I mean, she's really good at it, but she's not in a position of leadership yet. So it's frustrating, man. Frustrating. OK, okay. Um, both sides say that the other side is the problem. <laughs> so uh, the left is trying to say that the right is going to um, destroy our democracy and uh, do away with the Constitution. And the right's basically saying the same thing about the left. If they stay in office, our republic will go down the drain and the democracy and our Constitution will be just become history. Um, what's so interesting to me is this, the healing bomb of the equation is left out of both sides. It's called God. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering when we have 37% um, of pastors, uh, only 37% of pastors have a biblical worldview. Have we been intimidated out of the equation when actually we hold within our spirits and our souls the answer to the problem? Hundred uh, percent. You, your fingers right on on the pulse of it, man. Because it doesn't matter who you put in office if you don't restore the basic foundation, the the secret sauce that made America great in the first place, and that's a biblical formula. So any side or any politician or anybody saying we've got the answer for <clears throat> saving our country and and restoring liberty that doesn't bring the actual formula, which is a biblical formula and the original uh, founding formula for our country. Uh, to to the table, they're, they're they're all they're doing is kicking the can down the road. Like you said, they're just demonizing the other side. It's more what they're against instead of what they're for. We've lost. In fact, I I I, I just read uh, Pete Hegseth's new book, and I think he you know he's saying a lot of things that David Barton and I've been saying for thirty years, but he's putting it in the context of of what's going on right now in a really really good way. Um, and it's uh, Battle for the American Mind, I believe, is the name of the book. And 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 he nails it. He says the the loss of classical Christian education of actually teaching our children all the way through their education system, all of this knowledge, but in a biblical worldview, showing them what the Bible says about it while you're teaching it to them, and then how to go out and apply that, that is what is destroying America, not having that. And that's making a comeback. It's starting to grow. You've got a lot more people homeschooling and using this system. you got a lot more of these schools that are popping up out there. And that's why I say it's going to be a long battle, though, and it's going to take time. But that's the only answer, and that and that has to happen in the church. Pastors have to come back to those truths. They have to speak those truths from the pulpit. People in the congregation have to go to the pastor and say, Pastor, I need you to speak to what's happening in the country. I need to know what the biblical application is. What do I do as a Christian? If I'm going to do the Great Commission and obey everything that he commanded, if I'm going to make disciples, how do I do that? How do I treat my neighbors in this situation? How do I choose my leaders in this situation? How do I live out a biblical worldview with what's happening right now, I need you to speak to what's happening right now and ask your pastors to do that. And if they're not willing, you got to go find a church that is willing and that will speak those things and get your kids out of those public schools that are, I I'm telling you, it's so infiltrated by the left. They've been doing this, Perry, 100 years. It started in the 20s, 
And they are now to the apex of what they've been shooting for for those hundred years. They control the education system. And even people in these local schools that are small and they think it's not happening in my school, guarantee you it's happening in your school. So you got to get your kids out of the public schools, whether you homeschool or you start a classical Christian education school in your community. What, whatever, you've got to start paying attention to the education of the next generation. And then you got to think long term and say, you know what, I may not be around. For the for the yeah. full victory here, yeah. um, but I'm going to do it for my kids and grandkids. One other part before I run out of time: um, yeah. the left has, I hate saying this, but be descriptive. The left has been successful in tying the Christians to Trump. So by demonizing Trump, they've demonized God. They've done pretty successful at that to the point where Christians are now intimidated to say anything. They yeah. may be for Trump. They may not be for Trump. So what do they do? They say nothing. Do you think we have the fortitude as believers to stand up no matter how we've been identified? Well, we sure need to. We need to stand up and say, listen, I'm not for a personality. I'm for the principles. I'm for biblical principles. And if a particular personality is championing those principles, I'm going to support them. Uh, and and that's, that's the way we've always been. We're not party. We're principles. So I'm not even a Republican. I'm a conservative, Christian, constitutionalist, and whichever party is championing those principles and defending those things, that's who I'm going to support. We need to be the same way about personalities. Um, but I think you're right. I think they've done a fantastic job of labeling that. A lot of pastors won't speak to the issues because of that. I don't want to be connected to, to Trump. And and yeah, there's a few crazies out there that actually think Trump's the Messiah or that Trump, you know, it's all about Trump instead of about the, you know, the, the principles, but they try to take those few crazies and label all of us, yeah. as, you know, 75 million Americans as that. <laughs> oh, are you still there? Did we lose them? Oh, we've had some Skype problems. Let me just say to this, uh, patriotacademy.com is the website, is Rick's uh, website. Now he has online courses and he also has things there that you go. can take as your, we're back with him. One quick question, Rick, um, is the January 6th commission done? I mean, it kind of just went away with Liz Cheney. What, what do you think is going to happen there? Yeah, it's been a show trial for sure. Um, I know. I, I think they're going to continue. Uh, they're going to continue to push through the through the November election, and they may, you know, depending on what happens with the majority and 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 who gets the majority, you know, they may find some sideshow uh, way to try to keep this thing going with all the news outlets that are willing uh, to parrot the things that they're. That they're saying, Perry. I was thinking about something that we were talking about earlier. You know, when both sides are saying it's the other side doing this. Here's the real test that people should look for: which side is silencing the other side? See, if you if you're not confident in what you're saying and your principles oh, and and the, the the agenda that you're pushing, you don't want anybody to poke holes in it. So you got one side right now saying civil discourse or civil war. We want to talk. We want to debate. We want to have the opportunity for an open public square. You got another side that's saying the others are so dangerous, we can't even allow them to speak. We can't even allow them to be in the public square. That right there is a fascist mentality. That tells you who actually wants to change America completely from a free society to a totalitarian society. I'm all for debate. I love going to the other side, into the lion's den, and having debate and having discussion. I think that's healthy for the country. If, if you notice that a, a particular side is not allowing for free speech and public debate and, and, and uh, avoiding that, that tells you right there who you should be for. Wow. Good stuff. All right. By the way, a little bit of an irony there. Did you know that only one of the major networks carried the, the president's speech? Everybody else declined. Only, yeah, M kind of only MSNBC. Everybody else said no to it. Yeah, and Newsmax actually uh, uh, blew away Fox during that because they carried it. And, uh, and Fox didn't. I thought that was interesting, too. Good to see you. Uh, PatriotAcademy.com, that's Rick's uh, website. A lot of information, a lot of resources there. And support him. Check it out, PatriotAcademy.com. God bless you, pal. Keep up the good work. Thank you, brother. Good to see you.